Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. It's time to take a look at an affordable 1440p 240Hz gaming monitor from MSI, the G274QPX. This monitor was brought to my attention around the time I was testing Acer's XV272UW2, which had similar specs and turned out to be not very good. Hopefully this MSI version is a lot better and can offer a viable replacement for the now impossible to find Gigabyte M27QX. There's nothing revolutionary about the spec sheet here. MSI are offering a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 IPS LCD with a maximum refresh rate of 240 Hz, along with the usual features like adaptive sync support and a wide color gamut. Display HDR400 certification is also listed, although as there's no local dimming functionality, there's really no hardware to support true HDR, similar to other monitors in this class. The killer feature is the price of just $380 US, $20 less than the much loved M27QX, making it one of the cheapest 1440p 240Hz displays on the market, especially since the crappy Acer model increased in price after I bought it. In fact, right now on Newegg, it's the outright cheapest IPS monitor with these specs, so if MSI can nail its performance, we might be onto a winner. The G274QPX, despite not being part of MSI's MAG or Optics monitor lines, actually looks pretty similar to their other gaming displays. The outer surfaces are almost entirely black plastic, and it's the basic stuff, so don't expect a premium build quality or anything like that. But for what it is, it's functional, and money hasn't been wasted on stuff like RGB LED lighting. There's a few gamer style elements on the rear, the quality of the seams and joins is pretty good, so I'm satisfied with the build quality for a budget oriented product. On the front, we get the display panel itself with relatively thin bezels and a normal sized chin. The stand features a small square base that still gives you a bit of desk space around the monitor, and it supports all of height, tilt, swivel, and pivot adjustment with a good height range. Despite the small base and wide range of ergonomic adjustment, it's a sturdy stand that should resist a bit of desk wobble. The port selection on the rear includes one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a USB Type-C port with DP Alt mode support. Unfortunately, as the HDMI ports are not 2.1 spec, they cap out at 1440p 144Hz. Ideally, they should be HDMI 2.1 to allow for the full refresh rate over HDMI, although it's a non-issue for the display port. There are no additional USB ports, so this is one of the rare new MSI monitors not to feature a KVM switch, something that I'm sure was omitted for cost reasons. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle on the rear of the display and includes a pretty standard feature set. We get black boosting, crosshairs, refresh rate displays, and a clock to assist with gaming, plus a typical selection of color controls. There is no option to disable deep sleep and the monitor doesn't use DSC. For response time performance, MSI include their typical selection of three overdrive settings, the first of which is normal. Here we see an 11.49 millisecond average response with no overshoot. Not especially fast for a 240Hz monitor, and there is some ghosting visible in this mode. The fast mode bumps this up to 874 milliseconds, which in my opinion still isn't fast enough for 240Hz, but is superior to the previous mode as cumulative deviation has fallen to around 500, which is okay for an IPS panel. Overshoot is not an issue with this mode at the highest refresh rate. The fastest mode significantly increases response time speed to 3.56 milliseconds on average, but this comes at the cost of overshoot, with a 49% inverse ghosting rate and an average error at near 20%. What makes it difficult to evaluate the fastest and fast modes is that the fastest mode actually has better cumulative deviation, despite the big increase to overshoot, and visually it can appear clearer when looking at the UFO test. However, what also happens is that the small amount of ghosting you can see in the fast mode gets replaced by inverse ghosting in the fastest mode. So there's not really a reduction in artifacts, and if anything, I think the overshoot issues are more visible in this mode than the ghosting issues in the fast mode. For that reason, I'd prefer to use the fast mode. This once again highlights the issues providing such a limited range of overdrive controls, as I believe the most optimal experience would be something between fast and fastest. The ultimate solution would be a user-adjustable overdrive slider so that users could fine-tune things to their preferences and even the refresh rate they're playing at. What we actually get though isn't awful performance, it's just not especially well-tuned. The other consideration here is variable refresh rate gaming. The fastest mode is out of the question here, and the fast mode is generally good for gaming at the higher end of the range. Refresh compliance is good at 165Hz, so there's no problem for those mid refresh rates, and overshoot doesn't become problematic until around 100 or 85Hz. 
At 60 hertz using the fast mode, overshoot is very noticeable. So I'd recommend using the normal mode for those lower refresh rates, even though it does slow down the monitor to around 12 milliseconds, which isn't great. Unfortunately, this means the G274QPX doesn't offer a single overdrive mode experience. To get the best performance, you'll have to switch between the fast and normal overdrive modes, depending on whether you're playing at higher or lower refresh rates. Variable overdrive probably would have helped here. With that said, single overdrive mode experiences and variable overdrive, it isn't common for budget class products. This is a pretty typical trade-off. I would like to see these sorts of things improve over time, but for example, the Gigabyte M27QX also doesn't provide a single overdrive mode experience. Compared to other monitors at their maximum refresh rate, the G274QPX isn't especially impressive. It does outperform the VA-based 273CQRX-QD, which is generally why I prefer IPS to VA in this price tier, but outside of that it doesn't match the MAG 274QRX, which delivers a 28% faster response time at a similar level of overshoot. The older QRX model was generally priced around $550, so this new variant is much cheaper, but unfortunately it isn't able to match it on performance. The Gigabyte M27QX is also faster, but produced a higher level of overshoot. Looking at average performance, the G274QPX ends up in a similar position to the popular M27QX, although the Gigabyte model is slightly better tuned. Both models are especially close around the 144Hz range. Performance isn't quite as good as the older QRX model, which is both faster on average and produces less overshoot, but MSI are able to outperform the Acer XV272UW2, which despite featuring a faster response time, produced a lot of overshoot, and didn't give users the ability to change the overdrive setting when adaptive sync was enabled, which is pretty much a deal breaker flaw. When looking at the balance of performance across the entire refresh rate range, the G274QPX offers a typical experience in cumulative deviation. The difference between this monitor and the M27QX is pretty negligible outside of a specific refresh rate comparison, and although the MAG 274QRX is 11% better, that's also hard to notice in practice. It's only when we start talking about the elite, high-end 1440p high refresh monitors that there becomes a much larger difference in motion performance. The ASUS XG27AQMR, for example, offers 39% better cumulative deviation, a single overdrive mode experience, and a higher refresh rate. That's the benefit of buying a premium monitor, though it is 60% more expensive, so it is a different class product. Conversely, the QPX does outperform the unimpressive XV272UW2 at a similar price. The G274QPX offers the best experience in the mid-refresh rate band, so looking at fixed 120Hz performance shows a good result. Not class leading or anything, but similar to the M27QX. 60Hz is not amazing though. To remove overshoot artifacts, we had to dial back the settings to normal, and that resulted in relatively slow performance. With that said, you have to do similar on the M27QX, it's just that the M27QX's panel is faster at this refresh rate. MSI do support backlight strobing on this monitor through their MPRT setting. There's no real control over this mode, it's just a single toggle, so there's no ability to adjust strobe timing or length. While clarity does improve somewhat, there is noticeable strobe crosstalk and some red fringing, which isn't ideal for 240Hz use. The mode is best around 120Hz, but even then, due to artifacts and only functioning at a fixed refresh rate, it's hard to recommend using. It also doesn't look that different to say the M27QX is similar settings, so from that perspective it's not a competitive advantage either. For input latency, no concerns here. The G274QPX offers a 0.6 millisecond processing delay and the usual responsiveness we expect from a 240Hz monitor. The only aspect holding this product back from a position higher up in the charts is the slower response times at the maximum refresh rate. Other than that, this is a decent result. Power consumption from this monitor is excellent at just 20 watts, although this isn't that much better than the next best high refresh rate 1440p monitor, which consumed 23 watts. At least for these sorts of products, you can expect a relatively efficient experience. The G274QPX is a wide gamut monitor sporting 98% DCI-P3 coverage, which is also what MSI claim on their product page. This is a great result for a more budget-focused display and leads to 77% coverage of Rec 2020, better than some competitors like the XV272UW2 at 69% and the M27QX at 74%. While not up there with the absolute cream of the crop, such as the PG27AQDM, I think a lot of buyers will be satisfied with this. Factory default performance, it's okay, not amazing, but okay. 
The color temperature of the display is great, though Delta E's for grayscale ended up average. We also got some oversaturation for regular SDR content as the monitor does not use a gamut clamp by default. So sRGB content is expanded up to the P3 gamut of the screen and this leads to weak Delta E's. When we compare this to other monitors, you can see that again, grayscale performance is okay, mid-table, but not as good as the M27QX. Similar with color checker, mid to low result, and not quite as good as the M27QX, although that gigabyte monitor has a lower color gamut, so its level of oversaturation is understandably less. MSI do ship the monitor with an sRGB mode and it has the usual limitations like locked white balance controls. The performance here is similar to the default mode for grayscale in that we get average delta E's. However, the actual color clamping aspect to the mode is effective and does reduce saturation to normal levels. This gives us a delta E average for saturation and color checker that would pass as being factory calibrated, although MSI actually, they don't advertise this. The best performance can be extracted after a full calibration using CalMAN, which creates a software ICC profile. These results, like with most monitors, ends up pretty similar to other IPS displays, and thanks to its wide P3 coverage, we end up with great results even for color accurate P3 work. However, you'll need that software profile, so only applications that listen to ICC profiles will give these results. Brightness is one of the G274QPX's strengths, delivering 486 nits, which is plenty for most use cases. It's not a huge advantage over other products, but it's nice to see nonetheless. Minimum brightness though is not great, bottoming out at 121 nits, which may still be too bright for people that like to use their monitor in a dim environment. We like to see a minimum below 50 nits, which the M27QX is capable of. I was surprised to see a strong contrast ratio for an IPS monitor coming in at 1486 to 1. While still well short of an overall good contrast ratio and it gets easily beaten by VA LCDs and OLEDs, the G274QPX delivers a 22% higher contrast ratio than the MAG274QRX and 27% higher than the M27QX, which is definitely noticeable. I wouldn't say this is a panel that delivers deep, rich blacks or anything, but relative to the old LG Nano IPS panels, like we see used in the 27GP83B, it's a pretty large improvement. Viewing angles, perfectly fine, not much to say on that front. Uniformity as well, average, not bad, not amazing, bit of fall off around the edges, but not a deal breaker, and this can vary from unit to unit. Final section is the Hub Essentials checklist. While most of the advertising on MSI's product page is accurate, there are a few images that show a thinner than real bezel size, though the primary images are correct, so it only receives a borderline result. The HDMI ports should also be HDMI 2.1 here to support 1440p 240Hz, although the rest of the main color specs are actually accurately advertised, and even areas like brightness and contrast are a bit undersold. Where most of the issues lie is in motion performance and HDR. Claims of a one millisecond response time are misleading when looking at average performance, although the fastest responses are in the one millisecond range. We also don't get a single overdrive mode experience or sufficient refresh compliance. HDR performance is also terrible as the monitor doesn't support any form of local dimming, so the HDR capabilities should be ignored entirely. However, on a good note, I didn't see any flickering or pixel inversion issues during my testing, which indicates the panel is of good quality. I come away from testing the MSI G274QPX relatively happy with what is on offer here. After my very disappointing experience testing the low-cost Acer XV272UW2 and the apparent discontinuing of the great Gigabyte M27QX, I've been on the lookout for a new 1440p 240Hz monitor to recommend around the $400 mark. While it's not a perfect product, I think this could be the one to get. What I tend to look for in a value-oriented monitor are no major deal-breaker flaws, and that's the experience you get with the G274QPX. Unlike, say, the $300 Acer model, MSI haven't made stupid decisions, like locking down the overdrive settings, and there were no panel flaws either. On top of that, most areas to performance are decent without achieving anything particularly amazing, so there's a nice bounce between colors and speed. Speaking of speed, this is probably the weakest area to the monitor as we're not getting things like a single overdrive mode experience or especially strong performance at 240Hz. Response times are average and overdrive optimization could be better, but it's really not all that different to products in this price range and what we're getting is pretty similar to the M27QX. Yes, faster and better tuned displays do exist, but to get them you either have to pay more or sacrifice other areas to hardware and it's still better than similarly priced VA monitors or older IPS products, so really it's fine. 
Color performance in some ways is better than expected. This display has high brightness, very good contrast for an IPS, and one of the wider color gamuts in this price range. Factory calibration is only average, though the sRGB mode is decent, and unfortunately, like many display HDR400 monitors, there's no local dimming support, so the HDR experience is awful. Priced at just $380 US, I think this is an excellent deal, and it stacks up well compared to the M27QX we recommended last year. Both this MSI variant and the Gigabyte model trade blows, so buyers aren't missing out all that much now that the M27QX has disappeared from the market. The BOE panel MSI are using here seems to perform quite well up against the Sharp panel from the Gigabyte model, so it could be a good replacement and hopefully we see it deployed across more models. Now that we have a new option at $380, it makes it difficult to recommend other 1440p 240Hz monitors that are priced much higher. There are some exceptions to this, monitors like the ASUS XG27 AQMR perform notably better, and of course there's the OLED bunch like the 27GI95QE, but right now, other options simply aren't attractive, so that's restored some bounce to the force. It also puts a fair bit of pressure on the higher priced 1440p mid-refresh monitors like the LG 27GL83B and 27GP850, which are typically found around $400 US. The G274QPX performs quite well up against those products, so even if you ignore its 240Hz refresh rate entirely, and you plan on only gaming around that 100 to 140 FPS range, I'd still lean towards the MSI model. This is why I strongly recommend only spending around $300 US on 1440p 165Hz these days, ideally closer to $250, so that the value equation makes sense. But yeah, this monitor is a winner from MSI in my eyes, and being the cheapest 1440p 240Hz monitor at retails like Newegg, I'm sure it will fly off shelves when people realize it exists. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you do appreciate our in-depth analysis, then please do consider supporting the channel. One easy way to do this is simply to subscribe and give the video a like, share it with people that might be interested in this particular monitor. Also, if you are interested in buying this monitor or any of the others that we've been talking about in this review, links are in the description for them below, and also you can check prices via those sorts of links. We also have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts in the description, so if you want to sign up, gain access to some cool benefits, perks like our Discord community, monthly live streams, that sort of thing, again, that's a great way to support the channel and our independent testing. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.